Interpreting a let expression is going to be similar to interpreting a function call in that interpreting will rely on substitution. That is, the way that we interpret this let form, where we have x bound to 8, is that we can substitute 8 in in place of x and then evaluate or in interpret the plus 8, 8. Right, so our interp uh, for let forms is going to end up calling substitution. Not only do we have to update interp, though, we also have to in update substitution because we might have a let form inside of some other expression. So let's take a look at what happens for the substitution function when we have a let form. Let's suppose we have let y be 17 and x be inside some other expression such that we need to replace all the x's with 10. Right. So clearly what we want to do here, if we're replacing all of the x's in this let expression with 10, we should get out let y be 17 and 10. And if we write that out as a test case, it looks like this. Right, we're calling subst on the expression 10 for x in this let e, representing a let expression, the id e x is going to change to the num e 10. Let's try another example. Let's suppose we're replacing all the x's with 10 in this let form. So now we have y b x and y. Again, it seems clear that this x should be replaced by 10, so that we have let y be 10 and y. There's a test case for that one. Right. The id e x here on the right hand side of the let got replaced with the num e 10. How about this one? We're replacing all the x's with 10 and let x be y x. Does that mean we should replace this x with 10? That wouldn't make any sense. You can't say let 10 be y. Uh, 10 is always going to be 10. This might happen if we started out with a program like this. Let x be plus 5 5 and then let x be y and x. In this case, the body x here is not supposed to refer to that x. It's supposed to refer to this one. So we not only want to leave this x alone, but because this x matches the name we were replacing, we want to leave this x alone too, because this one hides the one that we were replacing that came from this outer let. So we want to get back let x be y and x. There should be no change to this let form in the case of replacing x. Write that out as a test case like that. Let's look at one more example. Suppose we have x's everywhere. We're replacing all the x's with 10 and let x be x and x. Should this x get replaced? Well, we said before that this x should not refer to this x, that the binding x should only become available in the body over here. So in fact, this x we do want to replace by 10. Uh, that might happen, for example, if we had as the, out, the overall expression, let x be plus y5, we got a 10. We want to replace this x with 10. Um, so this x should not change. This x should not change since it's referred to that one, but this one is supposed to refer to that x. So we do want to replace it with 10. We want to get let x be 10 in x, and there is that test case written out. So let's look at actually implementing subs then with those examples. I've copied a couple of the examples or similar examples at the bottom to help us think about this. So inside of subs, we have a new let e case. We've got in, right hand side, and body. In is a symbol. So in this particular, in this first example here, right, 10 is the what argument to subst, x is the for argument to subst, and this whole let expression, that is the in argument that we're doing a type case on. So this n refers to that y right there, right hand side refers to the x, and body refers to the x. So what do we want to get out in this case, in this particular example? We want these x's to both be replaced by 10s. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, we've got, as we said, a symbol, an expression, an expression. So what we're going to produce is still going to be a let. Every time we rename a let, we still get a let. So we know there's going to be let e on the outside. Um, we know that the binding is still going to be the same name. No matter what we do for substitutions, we're not going to change this name here. We shouldn't change that y to a 10 ever. How about the right-hand side and the body? Well, the right-hand side, we always want to replace by, um, you know, perform any replacements that we're supposed to on the right-hand side. Right, this x right here should get replaced by 10, and we can make that happen by recurring on subs with what for and right-hand side. Um, if we were in this other example where we have a y and we're supposed to replace all the x's with 10, we'll still get y back out, and that's what subst will do. If we have a more complicated expression over here, like plus xx, again, the recursion will work right. 
Body is also an expression, so we would naturally expect from the template to recur with subst, but in this case we didn't want to do that. Right? This x should not get replaced by 10, which is what would happen if you just recur. And the reason this x doesn't get replaced is because this x refers to the new binding in this let, so that's exactly the case when we don't do anything. So we need to check whether this x is equal to that x. That is, this x is the name, and this x is the 4. Let's compare those two. If they're the same thing, then we want to make no changes. We would just want to return the body as is. Otherwise, we do want to do the recursion that the template would suggest. So that's the complete update of subs to handle let forms, substitutions inside of let forms.